Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bug the Think Tank. So today we're going to talk about Flash Forward and Tales from the Dark Multiverse. I had to say it that way. It just felt wrong to not do it. So the reason I want to talk about both stories together is because they sort of fit into the same mold, but they're both somewhat different. But they do involve the same character, which is Tempest Fujinot. And Tempest Fujinot is sort of like a weird sort of hodgepodge version of the Watcher and, let's say, a guardian of time? Like, his job is to protect the, um, the positive multiverse effectively. And by the events of Dark Knight's Melt, it seems like he's very bad at his job. But what he's noticed is that, more like he's since the events of Dark Knight's Melt, there seems to be a sort of blackness, a sort of weird dark thing coming through and sort of infecting and possibly destroying our positive multiverse. So he's trying to figure out what to do. And this is where Tales from the Dark Multiverse comes in. So to figure out exactly what's been going on, or at least to find a way to help prevent this, Tempest Fujinot has gone through these other Earths which have alternative um, endings to popular DC stories to see like, well, maybe there's a way I can find to fix this. And he goes through worlds like uh, the the Nightfall universe, where the question is, what happens if Batman does not defeat Asriel? And Asriel takes over the city. Saint Batman. What happens if Lois becomes Superman after the events of Death of Superman, and she's super jaded and super angry and super wants to kill everything? Especially Lex. Especially Lex. Or, let's say Blackest Night, and Sinestro goes, no, I don't need to give the white light away. I can use it myself. And, yeah... That, uh, that one was depressing. Or something really intense, like, say, Infinite Crisis and the Judas Contract, which is where some slight changes in the perspective of the character have huge, dire consequences for the actual story itself. If Blue Beetle just says, you know what, screw it, I'm not going to wait for the good guys to try to help us out. No, I'm going to do this my way. I'm going to take over, take over Checkmate, and just be awesome. Or Judas Contract, where Terror just goes, like, you know what? I don't need Slade. I can do bad all by myself. And she does. Like, she holds the planet hostage, effectively. And it's really great. My, my issue, my one issue with it is that they're all ranked number ones, which I get why. But overall, we don't really quite see if there's anything that can be physically learned from it. So I have to come to the conclusion that Tempest Fujinot is seeing these before the events of Flash Forward. So in Flash Forward, Tempest Fujinot decides to request, or rather draft, Wally West into helping him clear of the, clear the taint that's spreading through our multiverse. And what what's good about that is Wally West did need this. He did need the win because Wally West has been in sort of a bad spot ever since he came back from the Speed Force and DC Rebirth, where it turns out he's been forgotten. the The entire DC universe forgot Wally West existed, and now that he's back, well. Uh, uh, things, things got better, but not better. His wife, Linda, does not remember him, so he has no wife. And he's getting back together, you know, with the Teen Titans, trying to figure out what's up with his powers, with his mentor, Barry. You know, and he later talks to his Aunt Iris, so there's, there's a family there coming back. So everything seems fine, with the exception of Linda, but then... Wally remembers that he has kids, and his kids are somewhere. He doesn't know where they are. He knows they're alive. He knows they're somewhere, and he's willing to do anything possible to fix that. And by anything possible, he was going to risk try to time travel again, which was a bad idea. Barry tried to stop it, which led to Flash War, which was really just like any Flash story. They ran, and they ran, and they broke the speed force, and... Wally was never the same again. He was then committed to the Superhero Trauma Center Horrible Decision Sanctuary. Uh, we, we've talked enough about the events of Heroes in Crisis. Because if, for those of you that don't know, Wally went even crazier in the events of Heroes in Crisis and killed a bunch of superheroes. Wally then decides to, you know, arrest himself or at least, you know, turn himself in. Tempest Fujinot says, like, you know what? I need you to help fix this problem. So take this magic, magic cosmic rod and you're going to clean up all this all this. Trust me, it'll be good for you. You know, there's a crisis coming. And ultimately, what Flash Forward did was sort of 
I want to call it the redemption of Wally West. And maybe it wasn't a redemption that he needed as a person, but maybe what he, but what the readers felt was needed. Because if I were to tell you, after just hearing that, what Wally goes through, it's understandable that he wouldn't be quite well. The readers never quite felt that he was handled well as a character. Like, why would you bring Wally back just do all of this? And if there's a payoff, fans will be a bit more forgiving, but we didn't quite see the payoff. And Flash Forward seems to be the attempt to bring forward that payoff. Because as Wally goes through all these different Earths, he does sort of remember who he was as, as a hero. He remembers his friends. He's able to reconnect with his family in one form or another, whether it be a different version of Linda or his actual kids. And it's a great moment when we finally see that payoff, and even more exactly what Wally's purpose is, which involves some stuff that we hadn't seen since... Oof, Dark Side War, when Dark Side was right before Rebirth happened. Events surrounding the Mobius chair, events surrounding Dr. Manhattan, and how Wally West is connected to all of that. It was a really great story, and seeing Tempest Fuginot still not come off as a really interesting character, but at least sell the mystery of his character in the long con. Like, if I had to compare Tempest Fuginot to anyone, he'd be like Varys. But sort of like Captain Bravo from Busa Renkin. Like, part of you feels like he's just being mysterious because he thinks it's cool that way. But hard to tell, his face doesn't move that much. Anyway, um, this brings video to a close here. If you haven't read um, Flash Forward and you're a Wally West fan, I would say you should probably read it. Uh, you're probably already upset by the events of Heroes in Crisis. This attempts to fix that. Actually, I think it does a great job of fixing it because it does imply that Heroes in Crisis, while it didn't need to happen was still sort of setting up a stage, setting the stage up for this story. And the eventual crisis event that I think we all believe Wally West will play a role in, which we'll probably get, get a look at in Flash 750, as well as the new event coming Death Metal. So, yeah, give it a look. Same thing with Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Really great, great ways to spend the afternoon. So again, we'll bring this video to close here. If you're new to the Bucket, thank you for to like, comment, share, subscribe. Smash up uh, that thumbs up button, and I'll catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching, and as always, may your fandom serve you well.